So as you can see, we're on the main dashboard of the network card user interface. From here, we can take a look at our left-hand menu. The hamburger at the upper left-hand corner will expand the menu, allowing you to read what each icon means. Alternatively, just hovering over each icon will tell you what it is. So let's take a look at the settings. We click on settings, we're going to go to the settings page. And there are a number of tabs at the top. So many, in fact, that you may need to use the button, uh, the arrow at the top, in order to slide over to see all the settings that are available. For now, let's take a look at the uh, general settings. At the top here are system details. And these correspond to the SNMP uh, system settings for location, contact, and system name. You see when we hit save, these do take in, in effect. And we've updated the top so we can see the system name and the location in parentheses. So current date and time. We can edit this. Make sure that you type in the correct time zone for you. This is an autocomplete field. So you would start with your country and then the city. This is a good one for the Eastern time zone in the United States. Uh, by default, we're using a uh, dynamic NTP and getting our NTP server settings from the DHCP server. You can change this to a manual in which you would manually set the date and time. Or you can disable uh, getting the NTP server from DHCP and manually enter the DHCP server. And you can add additional uh, NTP servers as required. Another setting is uh, email notification settings. By default, there are, there are no notifications set up, so you would click on new. Provide a name to identify the settings. Uh, the email address that you want the settings sent to. Whether the uh, Notification is in an active status or an inactive status. It has to be active in order for it to actually send emails. You do have the option to hide your IP address from the email body and to schedule reports during for certain recurrences every day, every week, every month. If you enable alarm notifications, uh, then you'll get an email every time there is an alarm uh, and, and you can subscribe to various criticalities of alarms, uh, such as informational warning and critical events. And you can choose to attach logs and, and these are separated by network card events and by UPS events.
And you have the capability to filter based on event code. So if there are certain events that you don't want to know about, uh, you can enter them into this field, um, or, or you can whitelist certain event codes to say, hey, no matter what, I always want to be notified if this event code happens. You can separate each event code with a comma. And below that are your SMTP settings. So this is for, for your email server to integrate so that you can actually send those emails. And you would provide the server's IP address or host name, the port that it works on, your default sender address. You also have uh, a, ch a chance here to globally hide your IP address from any email body that's sent from the card and choose the security, whether it's none, start TLS, or SSL. There's a couple additional checkboxes, um, whether you want to verify the certificate authority, and if your email server uses authentication, then you can enter the username and password here. Once you've configured the integration with your SMTP server, uh, you'll be able to click on this button, test server, in order to make sure that uh, it's working and you should receive an email. And if there are problems, you should, you'll get some feedback as to what the issues are so you can troubleshoot those.